The University of Waikato Lifetime Achievement Award winner. My particular interests in geology are in sedimentary geology, the study of sedimentary rocks, the, the rocks that start off as sediments at the surface of the earth, in streams, on beaches, on the seafloor, and then eventually get converted into hard rocks. And as a sedimentary geologist, my particular emphases have been in sort of three directions uh, over the years. The um, first of these was what we call basin studies, the study of the sedimentary rocks that form in particular basins in New Zealand. Here we, we're interested in what kind of sedimentary rocks are, the succession of them, the ages of them, and at the end of all this, the economic significance of them. Apart from that, i have also been very interested in looking at modern sediments, sediments that are forming on lakes, lake floors today, sediments that are forming around New Zealand today, out on the ocean floor. And so a lot of my research in sediments has meant getting on vessels. Some of these have been as large as the international drill ship, the Glomar Challenger, which drills you know, kilometres into the seabed. The third and, and sort of major area of study has been in carbonate rocks or limestones. And that's been my, perhaps my, my principal thrust of, of research over the years. And this started with my um, study of the limestones in the Waikato King Country area. It, it was formed part of my PhD studies at Auckland, way back in the late 1960s. And I worked on these limestones, uh, mapping their occurrences, uh, looking at the details of the composition of the limestones. There's lots of different sorts of limestones. Limestones are made up of the smashed up shell material of animals and plants that lived at the day. And most of the limestones here in the um, Waikato King Country area are, are of Oligocene age. Um, that means between about 35 and 20 million years ago is when they were forming. So you're looking at sort of ancient examples. And I study these in a lot of detail. You bring samples back into the lab and you look at them under the microscope in detail. You do um, physical testing of the rocks, you uh, look at the composition of those rocks, uh, the chemistry of those rocks, and build up a story as to how did these limestones form, where did they form, when did they form, and this posed lots of interesting questions to me because back in the late 1960s when you looked at the literature, um, it said that limestones, carbonate rocks, rich in calcium carbonate, you know, they really mainly formed in the tropics, in shallow seas in the tropics. And of course, the classic example are coral reefs. But the properties of those warm water carbonates I could not see in our backdoor limestones here at all. And in my PhD, I concluded that our limestones here were not tropical. They must have formed outside the tropics in cooler water. And so after my PhD, I then looked at the limestones right through New Zealand. Had a, a long field trip over many months and collected lots of samples and found they had exactly the same kinds of properties as our local limestone. So this was a New Zealand-wide feature. And so the possibility of these being non-tropical, I thought, where do we go from here? And the best thing to do was to go into cool seawater on a vessel and see if we could find limestones that looked like that. And so I uh, went to sea around New Zealand and what we found were carbonates that had very similar physical and chemical properties to the limestones that I had previously studied. And I realised we're on to something here, that limestones do not just form in warm, tropical, shallow seawater, they also can form in cool and colder water. And this, this whole idea of a non-tropical carbonate story sort of caught on globally and uh, many uh, limestones around the world uh, have now been interpreted to be non-tropical in origin and uh, many uh, researchers around the world are studying these both the modern and in the ancient in, in all continents and all oceans sort of uh, around the world. So in many ways I like to think that 
the, the seed for this was all started right here in the Waikato King Country with questioning the, the physical and chemical properties of our limestones. Now, you might say, why is this important? Well, it's important because limestones are very, very important. Limestones are the major host rocks for the world's petroleum and gas, hydrocarbon gas and, and oil liquid petroleum. And uh, that, that's because the, lime, the limestone made up of calcium carbonate can be fairly soluble. It can dissolve and, and have little holes in it that can hold the oil and gas. Uh, lots of industrial applications for limestones, but what, what's important that different limestones have different properties, different desirable properties. And so a knowledge of these tropical limestones and non-tropical limestones, and then of the dozens of different types of non-tropical limestones that we've discovered, does mean that different limestones should be perhaps considered for use in particular, um, in, in particular areas. And so I think that while the study is basically a sort of a blue skies type research to begin with, the economic spin-offs and significance of, of studying these limestones and what we have found uh, as a non-tropical story um, certainly has major economic ramifications. The University of Waikato Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Professor Campbell S. Nelson.